It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC South. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts coming up next. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis, thrilled to be back with you. Charles, today is the day, September 7, 2023. Should be a national holiday, in my view. 206 days since the Chiefs beat the Eagles in Super Bowl 57. The NFL is back. The opening Thursday night game happening tonight. Let's talk big picture. What kind of chances do you give the Chiefs and the Eagles of repeating as conference champions? First of all, I'm with you. It should be a national holiday. I like where your head is on that one. Let's talk about the Chiefs. They've just dominated the AFC West. I give them an excellent chance of getting back to the conference championship game and maybe beyond. For the Eagles, a little more problematic. There hasn't been a repeat champion in the NFC East since the Eagles did it in 2003, 2004. So their road appears to be a little bit tougher. kicker Brandon McManus about ready to get us started and off we go on EA Sports from his end zone Isaiah McKenzie and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback so the Colts now coming out for their opening drive and here's a look at their leader standing 6-4 I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And yeah, Richardson will throw to start out here. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. They run with the all-pro from a couple of years ago, Jonathan Taylor. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. They run once more with Taylor. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Richardson out of the shotgun. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. But that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Second down, another run with Taylor. Gets past one man. Still going. Touchdown. Taylor, 52 yards, and the Colts 
are on the board first here this afternoon. Bottom line, when you play a runner with these talents, you've got to be able to wrap up and get him on the ground. Or the first person who gets there, hold him up long enough for the next wave to get there and get him down. Otherwise, he will continue downfield and find pay dirt. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is good to make it 7 nothing ending. A drive that time of six plays. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick of the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 22. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and a couple. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Third and three. From the shotgun, Lawrence. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Back deep for the Colts, Isaiah McKenzie. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and ten. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. Well, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. On second down, it's Taylor. 70 yards rushing for him now to this point. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. A yard all they need, but it's third down. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. 
Taken down at the 42. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Here's Richardson to throw. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Brandon, you know I'm all about quarterbacks protecting themselves, but I have to admit it. I liked what I just saw there. That rookie wasn't afraid of absorbing a big hit. Now, you don't want to see him taking those shots all game long, but he picked up the first down, kept fighting for yards, and was willing to embrace some contact to keep the play moving. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 down at the 31. Now Richardson. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and 10. Richardson looking to throw this. sack to bring up third down and this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half but this time they're able to hem him in and it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket in this case you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure Richardson hit and he fumbles it but fortunately he's able to recover his own fumble that could have been trouble points one two and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free they did it there luckily offense hangs on to it yeah that's got to serve as a wake-up call though because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities and i'm not saying it happened here but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs you know who usually recovers it the guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit on fourth down the colts will call on rigoberto sanchez for the punt Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Play action. It's Lawrence. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it. And it'll be second down. Partner, I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. And on that play, they held up quite well. Here's second and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw to Ingram. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Five yards, now it's third and five. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Third and five. Here's Lawrence to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and 10.
Here's Lawrence. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Samson Abuka. Credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Looking downfield for Jones. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. Play action. Now Richardson. Pass complete downfield, it's Pierce. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. the handoff this is Taylor and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down yeah I don't know if it's exactly a win-win but if you're on offense you'll take that kind of a run all right it was kind of stacked up found a little bit of yardage and frankly they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense the playbook is still open for the coordinator Richardson the left side taken in by Pittman That'll go for a gain of seven. And third and one now. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game. And all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Richardson, he's got his man. It's Pierce. And that's good for a gain of six. And now it's third and three. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Richardson on third and short. That is caught, and he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession as they've got it with a first and ten.
And Richardson back to throw it. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Colts have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. effort and an even nicer stop from Quiddy Pay. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. Here's Johnson again on second down. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Now Lawrence on third and long. And that will be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. The field flipper there, a 47-yard punt coupled with a loss on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. All eyes on Anthony Richardson as he brings the Colts offense back out there. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head, head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they got to push off at the end of the round, too. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because, remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's McKenzie. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 44-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. 
So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now a give to Taylor. Down to the 42, second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here's a second and eight. Second down. Here's Richardson. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 25-yard line. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Richards into the air on first down. And his throw is incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. On third down, here's Richardson. Forced out to his left. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least if they think a field goal turns out to be the better call here. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. And Gay knocks this one through. And that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, a little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now ETN to start the drive. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. They go play action with Lawrence. The pass complete to Ingram on the crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. But give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. And he was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice gain. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. A short throw there to Strange. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. 
The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second and five. Running out of the gun with ETN. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They lost four there, and it's third down. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss. This offense so far on third down, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 32-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On the counter, ETN. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And he's down into the red zone at the 16 after a gain of 16. First and 10. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Motion man left is Kirk. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now Lawrence. A very quick pass to Ridley. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They kept the receiver on the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here's third and six. Now Lawrence. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up Ford. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. Pass complete. Now a race for the marker. And he will be out of bounds, well shy of the marker. So that's a turnover on downs. Great job defensively. I'm just going to go ahead and call it, partner. You could smell the desperation in that fate, couldn't you? Down big. They had to try something. No one was fooled. I think you're exactly right. With this deficit, though, go ahead and give it a shot. Didn't work out. In the end, I guess it doesn't hurt him too much. All right, guys. All right. Let's do it it's one play at a time, baby. Let's go, fellas. Yeah. We're going to make a play, baby. Yeah. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Richardson now on second down. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. 
You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. And he takes his beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. The red challenge flag making an appearance. Doug Peterson not liking what he saw there. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Game clock at 2.01. Time for one final play before the two-minute warning. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. His throw incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Back to the air with Richardson. On oh, the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. The well, touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Richardson to throw. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Agnew now to return. It'll be a net of 40 yards following a punt of 44. And they will take over first and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. But no, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's That's not a good combination. I think, you just you called it I think you just called it desperation time. <laughs> I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me at a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in a defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? Here's Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. And this offense has been a little slow to get going, but some signs of life here in this second quarter. They're moving it pretty good, and that helps the cause as well. Good yardage and another first down. 
Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Lawrence. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. From the gun, it's Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 13-yard line. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Defense. A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. Now a chance to make that encroachment penalty really hurt. First and five. It's a throw again is Lawrence. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. And with a 17-7 lead, maybe they're just looking to get into the locker room. Five seconds, all that remains in the first half as they come up on first down. Now it's Richardson. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Full of run show, Fadakasi. In there to get him. It's a loss of five. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. And now this throw incomplete, and that is how this first half will come to an end. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime report. We saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big time factor in that first half. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game, as he proved he's anything but a one dimensional running back. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw there to Strange. So eight yards on the completion there. And now that sets up third and two. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion. Would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync. Stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is. And they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. They brought in the heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. On play action, Lawrence. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On second down, a run with ETN. And he'll get this up to about the 40. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Lawrence will throw. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Straight ahead, ETN. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 55 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Every team in the league always wants explosive plays, breakout plays, and even more so when it's your horse who's had a tough time during the game. Yeah, not that great in the first half. Maybe he can recalibrate here in the third and then carry that over to the fourth. I like that. Recalibrate. Strong. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne. A 13-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars are back within a score. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. McManus's point after is good, and the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. Mm -hmm. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away.
And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. He stiff arms him. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 25, here's second and three. Second down, here's Richardson. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Richardson off the play fake. He's got his target. That's complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. That one goes for 30 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellows up front. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. From the shotgun, Richardson. Eluding the pressure right. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Ball on the 39. Here's second and three. Richardson looking to throw this. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Richardson on third and short. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's four. You know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So three points a response there to that opening touchdown in this third quarter. And that's an important three, both in terms of adding to your lead, but also letting the other guys know you're not going to just come out in the second half and take over. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. So he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Had the touchdown, as you see, last drive on four carries. And during the break, we were looking at some of the replays from the previous drive. Really good holes created, great space. Yeah, I like the observation you had, though, during that break about, okay, They've got to do something to slow down their runners. So is it bringing in more defensive linemen? Is it dropping in extra linebackers? What are you going to do? Personally, I'm going to take my safety and drop him into the box. I'm going to have at least seven in there until he shows that he can beat me through the air. Yeah. I've got to slow down the running game. I was just going to say, you'll take the exposure in the passing game over the top until you can prove that you can stop the running game. Sometimes you go cold 
Jones because you haven't thrown it in a while. Let's see if he can heat up again. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. On first and ten, it's ETN. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. On second down, ETN once more. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 82 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. A nice toss play there to the left. More than enough room to move the chains. And you know what I love about that play as a broadcaster? Seeing the big guys move. Seeing them get upfield and take out defenders. You know what I hated as a defensive back? What? That exact same <laughs> thing. Seeing those linemen coming downfield, getting ready to blot out the sun. Now he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So they say he went out of bounds, came back in, then touched the football. Can't be the first guy to touch it when you come back in bounds. That's why the penalty goes against him. Have to know where you are on the field. They'll complete this to Ingram is tight end. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. Play action. It's Lawrence. A short throw there to Strange. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes. And the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Back to the ground with ETN. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 13-yard line. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And the Jags are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Looking to throw Lawrence. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. You can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. They come up here with another shot from the 6-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Here's Lawrence to throw. And he's got it. And inside the 5 here before he's out of bounds right at the 3. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal.
Johnson. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. That was a huge play on third down. So now what? Do you go for it? Do you trust your offense? Or do you want to put on your defense to try and get the ball back? Me? I'm going for it right here. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. The kick by McManus is good, and that cuts the lead down to just three, 20 to 17. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. And I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And he's set to go on offense once more. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A very solid gain of 27. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. First and 10, Taylor now. 107 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Oh, the option to give to Taylor here. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Consecutive runs of six yards gives him a first and 10. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Again, it's Taylor. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The tackle there by Trey Herndon. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game, second and ten. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. That one finds Pierce right side. That'll give him eight that time, and that'll leave him with a third and two. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On third down, here's Taylor. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. Three quarters in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. Gay's kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get 
get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Jaguars getting set to go. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. The left side completion to Jones. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On first down, right back to ETN. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the shotgun, Lawrence finds his tight end, Ingram. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. They had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. They'll get this out to the flat for ETN. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Here's Lawrence. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. He throws it on the move, but can't connect as that ball's incomplete. Then their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. ETN up the middle. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory.
So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They go play action now. Lawrence. And it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from going back on top here in the fourth. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retake center stage. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. First and 10. Here's Richardson with it. That's going to be caught by Allie Cox. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there on 22. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Here's Richardson to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Richardson's throw pulled in by Woods. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're gonna go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. From the 37, they work on second and six. Richardson now on second down. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 26. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. But this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Running left, Taylor. Oh, no, he lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Following the fumble recovery, Richardson. 
Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Well, this has certainly turned into a showcase game for what he can do on the ground because they're just continuing to give him chances to run it, and he's earning every additional carry by putting up positive yardage on each run. And this offense on third down today, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and seven. A short throw. This is caught by Cox, and that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. Call it a gain of a yard, and that's going to make it fourth down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And Gay knocks this one through, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Kick this one away, and off it goes. Jamal Agnew now to return it. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. Taking it right down Broadway. He might take this all the way. He will take this all the way. Touchdown. So from three scores down, these guys have fought all the way back to grab the lead, and... I'll just tell people what happened when they went up three scores. I wrote on your paper two words, game over, and now I'm eating those words. I, I was wrong. <laughs> a little salt, a little pepper. Yeah, goes hey, down pretty easily. I, I will admit when I make a mistake. Well, it looked like it was going that way. This is one of those paging Frank Reich moments, and I can't believe I just brought that up because Frank Reich at Maryland in college did it to my Tennessee Volunteers, oh, and I was a big reason why my team lost. Sounds like he still harbors some pain from that game. You know, we still got a little time to work it out with the doctor. <laughs> Extra point from McManus is good, and the lead is up to five. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. And this taken in at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And the Colts coming out now. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. drive out on the ground and the result here a pickup of eight leaves him with two to go on second down well partner i know this type of running back i mean this size this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on and i just tell you from experience the first few quarters oh you're eager you come running up there i'm gonna tackle this guy by the fourth quarter you're coming up and thinking about it. And d-line wearing down fourth quarter yeah that's not a guy they want to see consistently Awesome. That's on the tackle, Braden Smith. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. They run once more with Taylor. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, 
and he couldn't even get going moving the football. On third down, here's Richardson. And it's a fumble, and the Jags grab it. And some space here. And a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral it down near the 11-yard line. Had some good yardage there, too, before he fumbled that football, Charles. Yeah, just think about it this way. Running backs, as a general rule, they kind of know when the end of a run is near, and you notice how they cover up, right? They protect the football. Sometimes quarterbacks forget that out in the open field. After a while, you start to wonder, does the running back coach visit the quarterback coach and say, hey, I can help you with this. We can protect this and make sure we keep the ball. First and 10 at the 11. Following the fumble recovery, Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Zay Jones, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over, and here a late turnover leads to a fourth-quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. McManus's point after is good, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Colts getting ready to go. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. First and 10, Richardson looks to throw it. He's got his man, it's Pierce. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. A good start there on first down. They've got to have this drive. No doubt about it. Down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays. That will be the key to this drive. Richardson. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Well, certainly those are the types of mistakes they're trying to avoid as they attempt to protect this lead late in the game. And let's face it, they're hoping that this one doesn't cost them in a significant way. Yeah, one guy committed a penalty, but now the entire defense has to pay the price and try and rise up and overcome it. Here's Richardson. 
A short throw. This is caught by Cox. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second down and three. Richardson to throw it. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 13-yard line. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And this is caught down for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So with just over a minute to play, this becomes a make-or-break onside kick. And the Jaguars are going to cover this one up. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And this game not quite in hand yet. We'll likely see all three timeouts defensively and then reassess where we are. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he will have a Jaguars first down. And that ought to be the one that seals the victory. Down to a knee for the Jags. Victory seemingly in hand. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. And they take a knee. Lawrence to a knee, and that will write a finish to this one. Was an excellent come from behind victory Charles especially there in the fourth quarter both offense and defense were clicking they're going to feel good about this one boy are they ever because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small 
They obviously did not give up on that one. And in the end, how about that come from behind victory? They'll cherish this one for a while. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Indy.